Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Raspberry Pi Pico VFO into an old 23 channel CB radio. <laughs> I was going to install the VFO into this 6 channel walkie talkie, but it would have required drilling holes and the result would have been too cumbersome for a walkie talkie. So I dug through my collection of old CB radios until I found the perfect candidate. It's an old Cobra 21 from around 1976. It's a 23 channel CB so it is in desperate need of some modernization. With the project selected I went to work figuring out how the oscillator circuits worked. The Cobra 21 uses three crystals at a time to mix to the desired frequency. It switches one of the crystals out for another one to adjust for the receive offset. This means I can use the VFO in the radio with minimum wiring and minimum extra components. If I were to install the VFO on a radio that required the VFO to adjust for the receive offset, it would have required an optocoupler between the transmit wire on the mic plug and the VFO. In this configuration, there is no need for transmit and receive switching as the radio handles that. The Cobra 21 uses a similar mixing setup to the old Cobra 19, the 29, and the KM88 as well as others from different brands. Here is how the mixing works on the crystal set I will be using. The crystal I will be replacing with the VFO runs at 23.290 MHz. The next crystal in the mixer runs at 14.950 MHz. The last crystal switches from 11.275 to 11.730 depending on the transmit and receive state. The first two frequencies are added together to give us 38.240 MHz. Then the last crystal frequency is subtracted. So with these crystals selected the frequency for transmit is 26.965 or channel 1. And on receive the result is 26.510 which is 455 kHz lower than our target frequency. This is done because of how mixing works on the receive side. 455 kHz is a very common offset that keeps the receive mixer from interfering with received signals. I will only be removing the 23.290 MHz crystal, so the rest of the crystals can perform their mixing job, and I won't have to worry about changing any other components. As for the offset of the VFO, simply change the settings to 3675000. That's 3,675,000. This will shift the VFO frequency down to match the mixing frequencies and the radio will be on the frequency specified. This is how easy it is to connect the VFO signal. I simply removed the crystal and soldered the lead from the clock generator to the non-grounded side of the crystal receptacle. The signal wire I used for the VFO is a piece of 50 ohm coax which is typically used for CB antennas. I only grounded the cable on one end where it is connected to the SI5351 clock generator to prevent ground loops and noise that could cause the radio to operate off frequency. When installing a VFO in this circuit in this manner always make sure the channel selector is set to channel 1 to make sure the radio is mixing as expected. A different crystal and or calculation can be made for other configurations. For example I could have removed the 14.950 crystal and calculated for that crystal in the mix. The mixer circuits change crystals as the channel selector is turned and there are two crystals we could choose from on each channel with their own calculation so there are quite a few configurations possible. Once the VFO's signal was connected it then needed a power source. The VFO of course runs on 5 volts but the radio runs off of 12 to 13.8 volts. This means I required a 5 volt regulator for the VFO. I used a 7805 and built a simple circuit on a perf board. The 7805 only needs two capacitors for filtering and I simply used the design from the data sheet. This is the design for your convenience. The board would not fit in the project box with the rest of the components. So I wrapped some tape around the bottom and laid it flat inside the case of the CB radio. I connected the voltage inside of the regulator to the switch on the CB. I connected the ground to a transformer case. The ground and 5 volt supplies then were sent to the VFO. The only other real work was drilling a hole in the case, but it already had one for a switch from an old Roger beep, so I enlarged it with a step drill so the coax would fit. I connected the coax power and mic and turned it on, made sure it was on channel 1, and sure enough, everything worked.
It was off frequency a bit, so I calibrated the VFO. Then it was perfectly on frequency all the way across the band. Assembly the components in the project box is pretty straightforward. I used a grinder bit and a dremel to make the hole for the display. Drill press for the holes for the wires for the two push button switches. I wrapped tape around the boards and shoved them into the case. The display was hot glued in place. A lesson I learned from this project is use perf boards when possible instead of wiring things together loose. The next time I build one of these, I will mount all the components to perf board to hopefully cut down on the tangle of wires. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see more VFO installation videos, let me know what radios you'd like to see in the comments below. If you want to learn how to build a VFO yourself, check out this video.